Many patients and clients tell me they have difficulty finding the best sleeping positions with shoulder pain. Now there are a couple different reasons you could be having shoulder pain at night, so make sure you watch this video all the way through to see which sleeping positions would be best for you and your shoulder pain. Hey there, my name is Dr. Joey Rosie. I'm an ortho and men's pelvic health physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. If you're new to the channel, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you never miss another video. So let's start by seeing what are the main drivers of shoulder pain. Some of the common causes of shoulder pain include frozen shoulder, rotator cuff tendinopathy, cervical radiculopathy, or post shoulder surgery. Now, Sleep is very important for a number of reasons, but in this instance, we know that pain is directly correlated with the nervous system. When you don't get the sleep that your body needs, your nervous system is on high alert. We also know that by not getting enough sleep, you can actually make your shoulder pain even more irritable. So let's talk about the common causes of shoulder pain and go over the specific tissues at fault so you know how to take the stress off those tissues while you sleep. Let's start with the rotator cuff tendinopathy as this is one of the most common reasons people have shoulder pain. So rotator cuff pain generally comes from the rotator cuff tendon, where the rotator cuff is actually a collection of four muscles that cuff around the top of the humerus or shoulder, which is actually where it gets its name. Now, most people that fall in this category experience pain on the outside of their shoulder. This is an area of the rotator cuff that naturally does not have a great blood supply, known as the avascular zone. Most people sleep in positions that further reduce the blood flow in this area, which is not a big deal for the average person, but when the tendon is already irritated, this is not helping. Now remember, a healthy blood supply is extremely important, especially when the body is injured and is in the healing process. If you wanna watch a video on decreasing healing time, I'll post a video in the description below regarding peace and love, which is the acronym we use in regards to speeding up tissue healing. All right, back to rotator cuff tendinopathy. Now that we know what is causing the pain and where you may be feeling the pain, let's chat about how we can decrease the stress in this region to give you a better night's sleep. So the positions to avoid are one, sleeping on the irritated side. This is, will cause a constant stretch in the avascular zone, which is actually going to increase irritability. And number two is going to be sleeping on the non-affected side where the irritated side is up and you let your shoulder roll in front or behind the body. By letting your shoulder roll towards your midline, you're actually putting a stretch in this region. So the key is to avoid these initially until the rotator cuff is healed. Now, quick side note, if you find that you cannot sleep in these positions, then you may have some tendinopathy. So how can we sleep that doesn't irritate these tissues? There are really two options that tend to work best. So number one is going to be sleeping on your back with a pillow supporting your arm and keeping it from coming towards your midline. The second is going to be sleeping on your non-affected side and have your arm supported. This is great if you can use your spouse, or you're gonna to need to support it with a couple pillows. By doing this, we're not stressing the avascular zone and allowing it to heal. Another reason you may be having some discomfort that is keeping you from getting a good night's sleep is shoulder impingement. Impingement occurs when either the rotator cuff or the biceps tendon gets caught between the acromion and humerus when you lift your arm overhead. Now, this is not normal to have pinching when reaching overhead you should be able to do this without any discomfort. If you find yourself having no issues during the day, but difficulty sleeping with your arms overhead at night, then this might actually be your first warning sign to get it looked at by a physiotherapist. So as I mentioned, people who tend to sleep on their stomachs with their arms overhead are the ones who will find this to be the most annoying, as having their arms overhead will further irritate these tendons and can keep you up at night or have you waking up with an achy shoulder. So how can you sleep then? This one's pretty straightforward. Figure out a way to not have your arms overhead and this will further reduce the stress on these tissues. Now, this isn't a lifelong thing. Simply take care of the stress and fix the shoulder impingement so you can get back to sleeping with your arms overhead. Now, number three is gonna be frozen shoulder. So frozen shoulder involves a tightening of the shoulder capsule. There is a big correlation with this diagnosis in diabetes and is the most common in middle-aged women. 
It's so common in middle-aged women that many professionals simply call this the 50-year-old shoulder. For this diagnosis, the most comfortable positions are going to be the two discussed with rotator cuff tendinopathy, but for a completely different reason. Now, the reason for this is not due to the avascular zone, but to allow the capsule of the joint to have the least amount of stress on it and for the arm to feel fully supported. So for this, I like to have somebody on their back with a pillow or two under their shoulders and one keeping their arm slightly out to the side. And number four is post-surgical. So for post-surgical, it really depends on the stage of healing that you're in. After surgery, your surgeon and your therapist will come up with the best plan for you specifically. But typically in the earlier stages after surgery, you will likely be sleeping in a recliner as this is going to allow for you to be elevated to decrease stress at the surgical site and reduce your chances of moving in the middle of the night and rolling onto it. Now, after some time has passed since the surgery, you may be able to go back into a bed and lay in some of the other positions mentioned in this video. The key here though, is the position that you will find most comfortable to you is going to be directly correlated to what surgery you had done and the tissues that were involved in the surgery itself. So ultimately, this is going to be what will guide you in finding the position that is going to be best suited for you. Okay, there you have it. The best sleeping positions with shoulder pain. It really comes down to what is the cause of your pain and finding the best position that doesn't further stress the tissues. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and make sure to subscribe to the channel and share with your friend who is having shoulder pain. Also, I encourage you to join the conversation below in the comments and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.